Hi, so today we are going to talk about the uh, reverse proxy uh, that we are going to use uh, our Nginx as a reverse proxy to uh, establish some sort of communication, some sort of producer-consumer communication between the client and the server. So yeah, so uh, let's start by understanding what basically a reverse proxy is. So let's say you have a bunch of um, backends, right? Uh, I'll just remove this stuff, let's say, yeah. So let's say you have um, two backend containers, right? So if you remember our Docker Compose file, so we had uh, one backend service and we had one frontend service back there, right? So let's say we create two containers to, um, this is basically one use case that I'm gonna talk about that. But let's talk about it. So you could create basically two containers, back in one and back in two, and uh, you have a huge website uh, and you are basically serving a lot of users at a time. So you want to load balance between them, right? So what you would do, you could place a server in between, let's say Nginx, and there are other options in the world as well. I prefer Nginx personally. So <clears throat> your front end, but user is here, right? So they are making a request using your front end, let's say a React app like we have in our product. And then that React app is talking to the proxy, and then that proxy is talking or forwarding your request to the backend. And then as it's replying back, the proxy is sending you the request back. That's why it's called a reverse proxy. So how you do you could do this first? You are hiding complete complexity of your backend network from your front end network, which is a great idea. Second, which is more important, is that you could load balance between your requests. Let's say you want to have thousand requests served on the first server and thousand on the second one, right? Like this one receives, let's say, maximum uh, thousand requests. Then after it's done greater than 1,000, basically this logic will be applied here. This should forward them here, right? It makes sense, right? And we hope that once this reaches 1,000, this is last loaded or we spin up another container to do the odd scaling of Amazon Web Services or whatever. So yeah, that's basically what the reverse proxy is. So let's start by getting into the code and because we are going to talk a little bit about how it's going to go with Nginx, so yeah, we are a bit specific here. So um, uh, you guys probably missed out on what's added in the Docker Compose here. So uh, if you remember in the last video, we uh, created a Docker Compose file for us, uh, sorry, Docker file for our front end, which was being served on the Nginx itself. And now I'm going to add that as a Docker Compose service. So whenever I say Docker Compose up, and it spins up all these services all together because they're supposed to be working together, right? So until they're loading up, uh, I think it would be a very good idea to start writing our um, um, Nginx file, right? So first, let's see what's our backend. So it runs soon. Oh yeah, it started. So if I go ahead and I speed up a tab for you guys to see, I would go to our old address. If you guys remember, our docking post host our uh, main app here. So what I did, I just made the main page of our app to return some JSON file, right? Some JSON from, I just picked it randomly from the internet. So uh, this is gonna return some JSON file, right? So what do we wanna do? We wanna get this data, not by just making our front end talk to this backend. We wanna talk to Nginx, which acts as a risk proxy, and then Nginx is gonna talk to the backend and get this data and reverse proxy, like return it to us, which, we'll, which is why we would call the reverse proxy, right? So uh, let's set that middleware or whatever you'd like to call it. I like to call it there in the 90% world likes to call it reverse proxy. So yeah, let's stick with that here. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna close that down. So in our front end, if you remember, we have this uh, Nginx configurations, right? So we are going to make some small or maybe a little bit big changes to it, right? So 
So then let's start um, heading to the server part to writing the actual reverse proxy. So yeah, first off, I'll just uh, write a command that's here. I'm going to do nginx as a reverse proxy, right? Uh, then we go ahead by basically creating a server and the nginx, yeah. And the biggest, one of the biggest benefits of nginx, as you guys already know, is that it's it's gonna have multiple server in the small child instances of servers with different IP addresses into one single nginx instance. And that's the best part for me, at least. I know other things provided as well, but I really like the way nginx does these things. Yeah, and um, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna say, okay, uh, this is your, um, yeah, Nginx, so I'm going to say listen on nano nano, and this is just a random port for you. This could be anything. So what we want this file to do is that this will uh, route our front end requests to the back end on port 408, right? Okay, so then we say as soon as you enter the the main location to this endpoint or URL, so let's just do a proxy pass to HTTP. Uh, yeah, here's something interesting that I like to tell you guys about. So if you do a local host here, you know what we want to do. You just want to tell Nginx. Okay, could somebody tells you, oh, I'm on 909 port in Nginx. Oh, could you please take me to this address? Nginx cannot resolve this local host when it's in a Docker container. Because Nginx is a server itself, so your system's host is different than what is your Nginx's host. So what do you do actually? You basically give your, uh, one way to solve this could be that uh, the Nginx and your system are on the same host network, but this can cause some problems for you. As if you see here, we have defined our networks and in the nail videos, I'm gonna tell you more about deeper into networks and how to make your containers uh, inter container communication successful. So yeah, uh, so if you have the same host as your system to the Nginx container, it's not a good idea. So a better way to do for currently, we can um, just um, give this basically my own um, systems address, right? So I just go to CMD, I already have it open somewhere here, so yeah. This is my current systems address. Yeah. Okay. So I give my own address and I give it support and this is my own. So when I ever say, okay, if you come at this endpoint, just go to this, find, resolve this address. And since Nginx has access to the internet, right now my system is discoverable to Nginx, but not local host because it considers itself as local host, right? So, uh, yeah. That's done for now. And then I already have written some uh, code for that. Yeah, so yeah, I will just write it here. So yeah, I'm gonna say proxy redirect. I don't wanna turn it on, right? Then I wanna say proxy set header. So we basically wanna give the header of a host and that's nothing special, like just give it a host, header, and yeah. You could do them the way you like. Uh, these are the normal good headers that um, at least I use for my work. Yep, or why don't we just copy paste that, man? That would be much easier in my opinion. Yeah, so yes, 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 yes. I hope this works. Yeah, so uh, there's nothing too special about this. All I'm saying here is that you go to 9090 and then you come to my um, bad boy, and that's basically the uh, backend which I have on my 408 port, as you can see in the Docker Compose. So the 408 is being hosted by the backend. Is but hosts the backend where we have our JSON endpoint. Then we have our um, 
No, 48 is not relevant right now. And yeah, I have also defined one extra uh, port mapping from 90902-4012. Yeah, so technically, theoretically, which might become our practical observation in a minute, we will see if we go to our local host 4012, that should take us or return us the JSON that this guy returns, right? So I've already put this version onto this. So once this build is complete, I will get back to you guys. Thank you. So yeah, our build is ready and it's up and running. So I'm just gonna go to the browser and I'm gonna type in localhost. First, I will show you the response directly coming from the backend. Yeah, so there you see the JSON has been returned to us from our backend. And now I will go to 4012. Right, and yeah, observing. We should still have some blocks this time from Nginx on our console as well. So, okay, guys, perfect. So, there you go. There is our Nginx working, and here it locked it. I just received the request, and yeah, I just went on to the. Uh, backhand and talk to it. So the cache there was the IP basically and you need to be a bit careful about that. If you use a Docker, it still won't work here because Nginx will still think of it to reroute uh, it to itself. So the answer that I found here is, is really amazing and that's uh, how I fixed that issue. So this is a stack overflow answer by um, Shrimp Phaser. Um, so yeah, he tells you the problem is that if you use a local host in the Nginx reverse proxy, it's gonna talk to itself, right? And the host machine is somewhere else. And one solution he gives is to um, just uh, host the container on the same host as their system. But it's not a good idea if you want to use networks and which you would want to use in 90% cases. So in the rest, he also gives you the solution that uh, use uh, your system's IP and then in Nginx is going to resolve that address 100% sure. So that's it, guys. That was the tutorial about Nginx as a risk proxy. Uh, so stay tuned with us. We have a lot more coming in Docker. I want to talk about volumes. I want to talk about networks. I want to talk about Kubernetes. I want to talk about AWS and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, good luck and uh, stay tuned till the next video. Thanks, guys.